This lesson deals with the conservation of complex power theorem. You can find these notes in the ECE 202 ebook in chapter 16, starting on page 8. Let me start by reading the theorem. In a linear circuit operating in sinusoidal steady state, the sum of the complex power produced by each source is equal to the sum of the complex power absorbed by all of the two terminal elements in a circuit. In other words, the summation of the average power generated equals the summation of the average power absorbed. And the summation of the reactive power generated equals the sum of the reactive power absorbed. Now, why would that be true? Well, we've proved similar things in a time domain, so let's go back to our time domain equation for instantaneous power, which is equal to P plus P cosine 2 omega t minus Q sine of 2 omega t. If we define all elements as absorbing power, then the sum of the instantaneous power is equal to zero. Let's integrate both sides of this equation, dt, from zero to t, where t is the period of our source, and then divide by the period. What is P of t? Well, it's capital P plus capital P times cosine 2 omega t, and then minus Q times the sine of 2 omega t. We're just going to add those up over the number of elements that we have, including the sources. Now, since the integral of the sum is the sum of the integral, we could exchange these two, bring the summation of P out. P is not a function of time. I'm left with 1 dt. Pull out the summation of p again, it's not a function of time. And I've got 1 over t, integral from 0 to t, of the cosine of 2 omega t, dt. And likewise here I can pull out the summation of the reactive power, not a function of time. And then I've got 1 over t, integral of sine 2 omega t. But the integral of sine and cosine is always equal to 0. So this term drops out, and this term drops out. And I'm just left with this first term, integrating 1 dt, I just get t, upper limit minus the lower limit. The t's cancel, and I'm left with the summation of the real power is equal to zero. Let's go back to our time domain equation again, and let's do the summation of overall terms, of assuming we're absorbing power. So I've got the summation of p, summation of p cosine 2 omega t, and then minus the summation of q sine 2 omega t. But I've just shown that the summation of p is equal to zero, so I've got zero here plus zero times the cosine, and then here I've got a term that's multiplying the sine of omega t and has to equal zero. Well, since the sine is not identically zero, then this term here must be equal to zero. And so the summation of the reactive power is equal to zero. Now, in both cases, we're assuming that every element absorbed power. It's a little bit easier to work with just that case because I've got zero on one side of the equation. Now, how does this relate to the original theorem? Well, if we have elements that are absorbing power, then their real power will be positive and their generated power will be negative when you consider it as absorbed. So the summation of the real power absorbed, positive terms, summation of the real power generated, negative terms, bring them on the other side of the equation. And the same is true over here for the reactive terms. And this is the conservation of complex power theorem.